Expedition Overland Season 5, the Nordic Series, is presented by General Tire. For whatever you do, General Tire delivers. And in association with Patriot Campers, the ultimate in overland trailers. And by X Overland's official apparel partner, Vertex. 13 years ago, my wife Rochelle and I decided to pursue our dreams by traveling the world by overland vehicle. We wanted to do it with a team and film our adventures along the way. And thus, Expedition Overland was born. We decided to start this journey by taking our first overland trip to Alaska, where we found out we had no idea what we were doing. Despite being completely inexperienced, it ignited a fire within us to experience the world through overland travel and conquer our fears, one border at a time. Through the next seven years, we would push ourselves and our vehicles across the entire Pan American Highway. We experienced suffocating heat in the Baja deserts and sweltering jungle canopies as we reached the end of the road in the Darien Gap in Panama. From there, we shipped our vehicles to Colombia and chased the summer in the southern hemisphere as we made our way to the very southern end of Argentina, Ushuaia. We then traveled on land and in the air, learning new skills as we pushed man and machine from Canada to Mexico in all new ways. We were very much over our heads, with flight and our risk thresholds. We were pushed to the max while our mortality was revealed to us in ways we never expected. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, no. After this period of trials, we were ready to yet again push our limitations and challenge ourselves overseas. We set our sights on exotic destinations, but little did we know we would be confined to our domestic cages. In 2020, in the face of COVID-19, we confronted the reality that the governments of the world were closing their doors fast, and with it, our plans to continue exploring beyond our borders. Borders can and do close. The privilege and opportunity to travel can be revoked in an instant. Finally, in 2021, the deadbolt on the door to the world began to unlock and a light on the horizon began to appear. We seized the moment, traveling back to Baja to film the Baja special and get to know the Van Stralen family, which built our friendship and developed future opportunities for the Van Stralen kids to travel with us on their own. Crossing the border felt better than ever and we regained confidence to travel again in other countries. Later, we returned to Alaska again with Peter and Dan Van Stralen, and this time with my oldest son, Cyrus. It was at that time in Alaska, looking out at the Arctic landscape at the very top of North America, when we began to hear whisperings that just over the North Pole, borders may be relaxing their grip. Looking forward to 2022, all signs indicated that the door to the world was beginning to reopen. It was time to build a team and begin the process to launch the Nordic Expedition. Before we could move forward with our next big international expedition, we would need to spend the next eight months getting our partners on board with our new big vision in a very uncertain world. From our past experiences, we know there is barely enough time to get another big expedition underway by the next summer. Even though Europe is still looking to open up, a question looming over the entire team was, will it be open enough to freely travel through it? Only time will tell as we work towards this goal. We specifically hope to travel throughout Norway, Sweden, and Finland before making our way to the Faroe Islands and onto Iceland, which is all culturally known as Scandinavia. The next question to solve would be choosing what trucks to ship to Europe and live out of. These vehicles need to provide a lifestyle that allows us to thrive, not just survive, for a whole team of eight during a two-month expedition. After evaluating team needs, weather, road conditions, and sleeping arrangements, we decided on three vehicles and a trailer. Our hero truck from the Alaska expedition, Adigan, 
will serve as our primary production vehicle and scouting truck. Our fifth generation forerunner, known as the Clone, will be our personal equipment hauler and tow vehicle of our Patriot Camper X3 trailer. Clone will fulfill the essential role of gear hauler for the team and tow the camp kitchen. The Clone's tighter turning radius and extended fuel tanks installed for the Alaska Expedition will allow the convoy to have a consistent travel range across the fleet. Our third truck will be an all-new Toyota Tundra, and it arrives not a moment too soon. I'm feeling relieved because there's so many months of work before something physical actually shows up, and then when it does show up, it's like, okay, now I can actually do my job. X Overland will be the first group to send a third generation Tundra on a big expedition. Within two hours, the truck is already at SES to get tore down for a wrap. Almost every aftermarket piece on the all new Tundra will be a prototype that will be used for testing for all of our other partners. Prototyping takes a long time to develop, and we don't have any time to spare. However, the relief of the Tundra arriving is cut short with news of a conflict in Europe that threatens our entire expedition. I'm just getting news here that Russia is invading Ukraine. It's the word they're using. If you're reading through articles, there's already people, you know, worst case scenario talking about, you know, the start of World War III, potentially. And going to Europe right now, <laughs> even though it's months out, our decision points are coming that we're going to have to decide to go or not go. If we travel to Scandinavia, this will put us next door to Russia, which presents many risk factors because there are so many unknowns at this time about the conflict. This is preventing us from making calculated decisions. So, while we need to wait for more information, we need to keep moving forward on the vehicle prep in order to keep our tight schedule. We will give the war impact another 30 days before we make the final go, no go decision. While the new Tundra, codenamed Orion, is being wrapped with an all-new look for the Nordic series, there's work to be done with the other members of this season's fleet. Adigan is getting a makeover for the Nordic series as well, sporting state-of-the-art 180-watt Red Arc solar panels on top of a new Alucab rooftop tent. The power generated by the solar panels will be managed by Red Arc's Manager 30 system and distributed through Red Arc's amazing new 2000 watt pure sign inverter. This will keep everything that typically runs off the wall running perfectly. Alucab is a new partner of XO this year, and we can't wait to try out their awesome new sleeping systems on our upcoming expedition. Just finished this beautiful wrap here at SCS, but we're up. In the sake of time, we haven't finished the bed. We're gonna leave it here. We're gonna take this truck pretty much across the street over to Dark Horse Customs, where the suspension just arrived yesterday, just in time. We're gonna get Icon suspension put on this. I'm ready for it. Dark Horse Customs is the official shop of X Overland, and they are saving the day again with their expert installers. Parker heads up the shocks and tire mounts. With the new suspension in place, we can now mount our 35-inch tires and check for clearances at full steering lock. So we can get back to SCS, where we have all hands on deck to get the bed and the Alucab cabin lifted into place. The Tundra is now finally back at our shop, where we can start our installs. And the Greater X Overland team is finally able to put their hands on the all-new Tundra. The overwhelming project at hand is to complete the new Tundra. It's full of first-time installs and problems that come with prototype components. Problems like no instructions, because they haven't been written yet. Cross-product integration is also a big unknown. How will different components play together on a finished vehicle? 
The good thing is that so far, everything seems to be playing nice. Next, we tackle the Prinsu roof rack as we wait for the bumper and sliders to arrive from CBI off-road down in Idaho. We should see it shortly. My good friend Scott Shinsuitz, owner of Dark Horse Customs, saves the day by sending Parker to come work at our shop for a few days as a special mission. We certainly couldn't do any of these expeditions without people offering their help. One of the biggest changes that takes place visually to any vehicle is the armor. CBI has completed their first prototype front bumper for the all-new Tundra and is built into two pieces to assist in simplicity of winch install and maintenance. We mount a worn Xeon 12S for ultimate pulling power should we need it. We immediately wrap it in the Nightline rope for easy visibility when it gets darker later into the expedition. It's terminated by the Factor 55 Ultra Hook for maximum flexibility in recovery situations. The Tundra is going to be our workhorse for this trip. It will be utilized as the main lodging for two. It will be the only home with a good heater, which will probably be fought over in the months to come. Electrical is next, and the foundation for all switching is the Red Arc Red Vision system. It will allow us to run the camper like a house, with centralized command of the switching and power draws of the fridge and auxiliary lights, etc. These are the challenges we love to face as X Overland. We have built over 20 of these vehicles as of now, and our skills continue to get forged. We're working hard to be within best practice. Goose Gear is a longtime supporter of Expedition Overland, and we work closely together on new vehicles all the time. And this year, it's the rear tundra bed that's being prototyped. The truck bed has a lot of organization built into it and has the most usable storage left over for all the odd boxes we will carry on the expedition. Next Friday, the trucks are gonna be 100% ready to ship to Europe for the trip. So there's quite a few little things that still need to be done, nothing major. All the major installs are done. So now it's gonna be refining systems, this is all gonna have to be pulled out and scrubbed down. My, my big concern with all the trucks, not just this one, is that once you import something into another country, they can be very particular about the cleanliness of something. So like if there's dirt and soil and stuff, they might flag it, quarantine it for like two weeks sort of thing. It's like bugs in the dirt, fruit flies, things like that. And we don't want any of those problems, so we gotta make sure that this is all really clean so that we can get in the trucks and leave on the other end. The go-no-go -no -go decision is just a few days out, and it looms over us in the back of our minds. All right, Eli, I'll need you to clean back there too, this stuff. Greater decision on whether we should go to Europe needs to be decided once and for all. It's been 30 days and today is the moment of truth. We're not getting much more information on the Ukraine-Russian situation. Things are developing back and forth. Nothing that has given us any concrete yes or no. Uh, so we just have to make a decision. And so this morning we met as a team and uh, we looked at everything and we decided that we're gonna go for it. We just have to start living. We gotta go for it. So from this point on, we are 100% committed into going to, going to Europe and uh, come what may, we'll solve those problems as they come, but we're going. With a full go decided, it's now time to tackle one of the last major steps before these trucks are ready to leave. Final loadouts are completed 
oil changes are reset, and last looks are completed. The test run is a critical part of the EXO build process, providing us with an opportunity to evaluate the build for fail points and other areas in need of improvement before we begin our expedition. Well, let's put them on a little tougher trail and see how they flex. Sounds good. Challenge accepted. During a test run, there are customary steps we take to evaluate our builds, like stuffing the tires to monitor for any excessive rubbing within the wheel wells. We have decided on the General Tire X3 with the universal tire size of approximately 35 inches for this expedition. We did this due to the success of running 35 inch tires on last year's Alaska Expedition. The Grabber X3 tire is most likely going to be overbuilt for the European section of roads but will thrive on the volcanic roads of Iceland. Let me know if you catch anything else, anything to add. Right now we have D-ring in the trailer chains, needs to be replaced. Okay. The E-brake tightened on the trailer. SD cards in the radios. Adigan and Tundra, and need to make sure you verify the recording. Radio cutting out in Adigan. Mm -hmm. Sweet. All right, well, let's head home. Cool. Sweet. Nice work. Nice. Good job. Test run. Check. Well, good morning to vehicle departure day of the fifth expedition our fifth big expedition right now, right here, of the Nordic series. And uh, all the trucks are running. We got them all plugged in last night. They are ready to go. The first problem we encounter is completely unexpected. The problem is I'm at, I'm at uh, a loading dock right now in Bozeman, but all these trucks have to have only a quarter tank of fuel on them. It turns out Convoy that to make the journey overseas aboard a cargo ship, our vehicles may only have just enough fuel on board to load them up in the U.S. and to unload them in Europe. That means before we can load them onto these semis, we need to burn off three quarters of a tank of fuel. I guess the first preliminary miles of season five will begin with our fleet driving in convoy to Billings, Montana, where my father, a former truck driver himself, We'll greet our truck drivers at an old loading ramp on the homestead where I grew up. Meet Matt Hopkins, long haul truck driver, search and rescue high alpine specialist and logistics coordinator for XO Expeditions. Matt is not only the shipping genius behind the computer screen, he also provides boots on the ground when it matters most. He will be escorting these trucks to port in Portland, Maine where they will ship row row, or roll on roll off, to Belgium. Following in big expedition tradition, started in South America, we have a new flag that we ask our key individuals that play a major part of our expedition to sign. That could be hauling our vehicles, helping out with logistics, providing cool intel along the way, or simply going the extra mile to help us along. I'm excited to see who else will sign this flag out there in the unknown. Yeah, you did insure those trucks, right? Those trucks are insured, correct? I, I insured them. <laughs> okay, thank you. Can't thank say you. anything about the drivers, but yeah. I insured the trucks. Oh, okay, okay. The ship is waiting for them in Portland, Maine. When loading or unloading vehicles being shipped to international destinations, there is no substitute for having someone there. So we made it to the port this morning to find out that the port may or may not be closed. Seems like typical overland troubles you run into. So with some help from other fellow truck drivers at all the stuff, we are gonna borrow their ramps and see if we can't get these trucks unloaded here. And then I will import them tomorrow to the port. See how it goes. We are confident that with Matt on the scene, what needs to happen will happen. So we're at the end of the road, at least on the U.S. side anyway. 
Everything is cleared through customs and ready for export. The trucks will be traveling over the Atlantic for the next four weeks. With the trucks now gone, it's time to start planning out the minute details of the expedition itself. On this expedition, my oldest son Cyrus will be taking a more active role in the planning and the navigation of the entire expedition. In addition to his navigational skills, he's been developing his post-production skills and will be editing in the field as well. We'll break the trip into two phases. Phase one will be throughout the European-based Scandinavian countries. Phase two will be getting ourselves from Denmark to the Faroe Islands and onto Iceland, where we will ship the trucks home after our time there. So today, uh, Matt and I, Matt, really, is just filling me in on how we're getting our trucks from Herschel's Denmark once we hopefully complete our circumnavigation of Scandinavia up top and then getting over to Iceland. So if anything goes wrong, it's Matt's fault. Yep, I have to own that one. <laughs> <laughs> He's working with a guy in country to make sure that we have a one-way essentially a one-way pass from Denmark to Iceland because we shouldn't have to return back to Europe to get our trucks home after the expedition. But we're planning all of that logistics and we don't know all of those things entirely until, I mean, we would probably be halfway through the trip before all of that stuff is completely ironed out. So we're kind of stepping off into the unknown and then we'll figure out how to get it all back once we're all out there. So, good job so far. We haven't left yet. <laughs> Keep our fingers crossed. Yeah. Getting ready, we're in the final days of preparations before we head out for the Nordic series. And I didn't realize how fast time has gone from South America to here. It's been since 2017 that we've taken the whole team, shipped the trucks overseas, paperwork for everyone, insurance for the vehicles when they're overseas, flown over with all our gear and gone through this whole process. So I feel like I'm dusting off the cobwebs a little bit. I'm really excited about it. Forming the team of phase one of the Nordic expedition will be myself and my wife, Rochelle, our oldest son, Cyrus, cinematographers, Richard Giordano and Caroline Van Stralen, our lead navigator, Mr. Kurt Williams, and the Van Stralen brothers, Peter and Dan, who will both be doing post-production in the field with Cyrus and filming the adventure. I finally made it from British Columbia to Bozeman. We have a couple loose ends to tie up still, but you know, in two days, three days, Everything should be together and ready to go, which is good because we leave in three days to Brussels. It's happening now. I'm getting excited. This will be my longest time being away from home for so long, being two months. And I'm a little nervous for that, but I think I'm more excited than nervous. It'll be really fun. I'm really excited to be over in Europe because it's a new part of the world and being able to try those some new foods and drinks and just seeing what the culture's like over there. Uh, I'm just get, packing my bag some last minute things because we fly out on Monday, so I'm, I'm really excited. My role uh, over the years has kind of been really all about the logistics, and which is what I enjoy most. And that's not just the day-to-day -day stuff, but maybe some of the head planning and, and putting some of the pre-trip planning together. Um, and everybody dives in on that because everyone has goals and things they want to see, places they want to go. Um, so really, I kind of look at a lot of that and we talk it out as a team and decide what our daily uh, routes gonna look like and where we wanna go and what the objectives are for filming as well. As always, we wish we had more time. That's like a general theme with every single trip we've ever done with XO. We always wish we had more time. Spent a lot of time putting my, uh, kind of my travel book, my logistics book together of all the places. Uh, collected a lot of great maps and, and books and really finding that there is a lot of cultural history, a lot of uh, long, long history in those areas and getting to Nordcap is kind of one of those checkbox bucket lists as, as far north as you can drive in Europe. So really excited to get there. I'm just a few days out from meeting up with the rest of the team. They're coming out of Montana. I'm coming out of Salt Lake here. I'll be seeing everybody and excited to kick off the adventure. 
A few months ago, we were invited to join the Nordic expedition. As overlanders, this is a really cool trip because the Nordic and Viking people uh, had a really adventurous spirit. They weren't afraid to travel to where people believed you'd fall off the end of the world and the far reaches of the map. And I think that's, that's what we do in our own way. And uh, this trip is really gonna test us. It's gonna be fun. I have a very strong feeling that this experience and these places that we're going to are going to have a deep impact on me in different areas, but particularly in the way that I view the world and potentially even the way that I view life. These destinations really fit into what I love. I love the kind of rugged coast, cold weather places. The history of these areas is something I've researched and been in, interested in since forever. So actually going there is gonna be amazing. But um, yeah, I mean, all the planning's finished, the trucks are built, you know, everything sounds amazing on paper, but uh, I just finished packing my bag and I really realized that this is actually happening. We're about to go on this incredible adventure, an adventure of a lifetime. The Van Stralens will be visiting family in Norway, so they're heading out a few days earlier than the rest of the team. We should see them in Oslo after a few epic days of travel. Today is the day that everything we've been planning for actually becomes a reality. We've made it in time. We have all the resources we anticipated needing. Europe is open and the trucks will arrive hopefully within the day. The trip is no longer a theory, it's reality. Now we willingly step towards a new set of challenges. Whatever may come through the fog of the unknown, we will tackle it as a team. From Montana, we fly to Chicago, then from Chicago to Brussels, capital of Belgium. Within the hour of touchdown, my dearest friend, Kurt Williams, has arrived from Utah. See you guys. See you. We will also be connecting with our local fixer, Edwin. So we've just met up with Edwin, who is our, would you say Edwin, you're our fixer? Yeah. In-country in fixer? Yeah. Why not? <laughs> Uh, which has always been the case uh, as we traveled around the world. You, you find an awesome individual who just wants to help you, and that's what Edwin's doing. And uh, he's been helping us get our vehicles out of customs. We are heading to the port to start what is commonly known as a long, arduous process to get our vehicles out of border jail. I uh, just received the email. Uh, all your cars are being released by the customs. So we are clear to pick them up immediately when we arrive. Just now? Just now, two minutes ago. Wow. So we don't have to wait. <laughs> we can go immediately. I'm happy, uh, for, I'm happy for that also. <laughs> yeah. Good job. Yeah, thanks. Do you do pounds in the <laughs> Netherlands? Is this yeah, a thing? Yeah, okay. yeah. Since, since COVID, it's, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. it's universal. It's universal. It's global yes. now. Yes, yeah. it's global. Awesome, thank yeah. you so much. No problem. That's a big win. Like we in Colombia, we were. It took us three or four days to get those trucks out of port. Yeah. We are at Zeebrugge, Zeeburg. I don't know. Heard it both ways, actually. I've heard it both ways too. But Shelley and Edwin went in to get the final documents, and there's more paperwork on top of the paperwork that we've already got. But we were just sitting here having a conversation talking about how important it is to have a guy on the ground and how cumbersome it would have been if we didn't if we were trying to do all this by ourselves so if you're looking at doing international travel finding guys that'll help you on the other end is critical because they say you have only three no i say i have four so they <laughs> by the sounds of it it seems like the problem solving has already begun got her done yeah i hope we hope. We'll find out once we uh, actually open up the gate to get the cars. Yes. The trailer was a little bit of an issue because they imported it as two. Two separates. Th separate things. Yeah, and the, 
the custom sees as two separate, but they were only unloading it as one part. Yeah. So it was confusing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. But we managed. The big question on all of our minds now is if all of our equipment is still in all the trucks. <laughs> is that unlocked? Everything's in there? It's unlocked. It's all there. Yeah. It was unlocked? It was unlocked. Whoa. <laughs> this is like lenses and everything hanging out. And a drone. Okay. Yeah. Sweet. Are they all? It's all there. I mean your boots. Awesome. All right. We'll see if they start. The one I'm the most nervous about is clone for some reason. A quick tip with roll-on, roll-off shipping or row row is that your battery has to remain connected during its voyage. Dead. Due to parasitic draws that almost all overlanders are familiar with, you should just plan on having a dead battery on the other end. So we pretty much anticipated dead batteries on this end just with all the electronics that we run and everything. It's just pretty probable. So we packed jumper packs and all the trucks, charged them up before we left in the event that this would happen. So hopefully we'll make this quick and be out of here. All clear, clear prop. However, with some new electrical hacks up our sleeve, the all new Tundra fires right up. Should we do the plates now? Yeah, you have okay. to do them first. Okay. Final checks on all the systems are made before we even leave port. Radio check, radio check, add again. Got you loud and clear, add again. Radio check, this is Orion. Gotcha, Lima Charlie. This is big. This is the first mile, the first 100 feet out of port. It feels really good. Feels so good to get the trucks out of port. Last time we saw them was in Billings, Montana. You see them drive away on a truck and then you fly across the world and you show up and they're sitting there in a parking lot. And it, it's mind blowing every time. Thank you to everyone that helped us get those shipped to Matt and Edwin here. Oh, I'm excited. I'm really excited. I'm ready to go have an adventure. Let's do it. With our trucks officially out of port, it is time to say goodbye to Edwin and his business partner, but not without first signing the expedition flag. The first ones in Europe. Nordic series flag for this year. Okay. And anybody that helps us and becomes part of the, the trip along the way signs it. Have a lot of fun. Oh, we will enjoy it. Thank you so Thank you. much. Thank you, no problem. Yeah. Man, you guys blessed our trip, made it possible. Hope to see you again. You too. <laughs> On the other side, let's go for a trip. On the other side. Yeah. yeah. Good idea. <laughs> yeah. Good idea. Anytime. Kurt is an extremely skilled navigator serving on multiple E7 expeditions with myself and Scott Brady over the past decade. How's it looking? And right here, it's colding is our break off point where we've got to make a decision whether we're going to drive around up to Oslo or, or whether it lines up well with the ferry. You got it. With the ultimate goal of grabbing the Van Stralens tonight in Oslo or t late tonight or tomorrow more realistically yeah. and in the morning and make our way up to Cap where we camp tomorrow. He has become a logistic master as he has planned trips on six continents and has traveled through 32 countries including the Pan American twice. We will quickly move through this part of Europe, and in one day's time, we will hit two expedition records. First, a 999 kilometer travel day. We also see our highest temperature of the expedition of 99 degrees Fahrenheit through Germany into Denmark.
After a good night's sleep, it's time to board the ferry to Norway. I'm plane 20. Plane 20. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Kurt has put us into a good position to pick up the Van Stralens this afternoon in Oslo. This is so cool. Definitely a first time experience for me. With the excitement of boarding a massive ferry, I've decided to ride with Kurt and abandoned my 17-year-old son to board the ferry on his own while towing the trailer for the first time in Europe. Where is it all these? Yeah, hydraulic or all the cable? No, it's, yeah, it's hydraulic. Wow, man. That is a huge hydraulic line. Yeah. That's massive stuff. We barely clear this. Okay, just make sure you're gonna go. Personal sign of Babel's out, no matter what language you speak anywhere. All right, we'll see you on the other side. See you in Norway. Traveling the world, we have utilized ferries for passage to many far flung places. Nowhere have we found the ferry system better organized than in Northern Europe. And we've come to welcome the respite they provide along our journeys. <laughs> With the vehicles parked below us and the ocean all around us, there is nothing left to do but enjoy the downtime. For some, that's as simple as catching up on work. For others, it's spending time quietly reflecting upon what has been, or perhaps giving some thought to what may lay ahead. It's not much, it's like switches back up here. It's like this little high mountain that's looking at With the docking of the ferry, we put our strategy for navigating Scandinavia into action. Despite our hours of planning at Kirk Trail, within two minutes of driving into Norway, we are finding ourselves lost. But you can't take yourself too seriously on these trips. Don't let a wrong turn, or five, Get your spirits down. We turn our misfortune into a game by tallying the number of wrong turns throughout the expedition. The current tally is seven. It has been an adventure in itself to gather our team together and begin our next major expedition. Having weathered the storm of a global pandemic, having persevered despite a threatening new conflict in Europe, we have made it here to Norway. And we're all together. But getting to where we're standing right now is just the beginning. With our whole team finally assembled, our overlanding journey through Scandinavia is well underway. And this will be a true test if we can get ourselves and machines an estimated 8,000 expedition miles by the time we ship home. Over the next two months, we will use our time to explore and fill our days with adventure and live the life that we have fought to get back to over the past two years. This has the potential to be the greatest adventure of our lives. Join us next week for episode two of the Nordic series when we embark upon our journey north and to the end of the earth.